have someone else in mind, but if you just want to take a couple of minutes to find who you want to work with and I can pass out some paper. Is everyone following, by the way? I also wanted to explain anything a little more. Yeah. Uh, you to Thank you. 
So there's two ways of using it. It's like either going on this platform itself, searching yeah. on the system to find something which is relevant. And then we can have a nice one where you already know and you jump like you can have it as a journey. Yeah. Yeah. One of them is a bit longer when you search. So I think depending on how much you check in I don't like some from you know and keep it like you know, it's 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 like I can I can can go I can 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 Yeah. 
So, uh, so yeah, I think that's the most two minute warning, guys. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, I'm just going to write up some of the personal How do I know that so it's ready? Like basically, you got to do that. So, you guys want to connect to the so I think we can just assume that in yeah, some way, if they say they don't push it, some way to put the car and put it in the car. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If not, then we'll get all the Uh, the project 
for example, the project name, uh, project name A. So about uh, the project object objective and the fund uh, the duration and the cap of cap of cap of the fund. So and the uh, interest. And uh, the system will ask uh, how many cryptos do you want to deposit? Um, can I change my mind and withdraw before the end of the uh, fundraising period? So probably, probably no. So <laughs> probably no. <laughs> 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 That's a very That's I think quite. That question I was really great into what this is all about, like anticipating um, those things that might be on the mind of the user but don't necessarily spring to mind when you sort of um, don't think about things necessarily in this in this more sort of mm -hmm. uh, conversational interaction. Um, it's good. Did you want to share as well? Yeah, we can do. We have, we have to do like a rule. Probably phrase that badly. Like, do you want to share? Probably not. On so. the computer. So hey, <laughs> this project looks cool. I'd like to support it. Please show me who you are. What do I need to show you? I would like to know what tokens you have. Oh, I have ETH. I need to explain how this process works before we continue. This is how it works. <laughs> Sounds good to me. That's when I tell him that if you pledge, you're going to get it back if the project's not fully funded then. He likes that. Okay, yeah, how much? Sounds good. How much would you like to pledge? I'll give you one ETH. Thank goodness you did that because it has to be more than one dollar. Because, oh, and now I give you a new alert. Even if the project fails, this project gets this much money, which is like $10 because you allowed them to pool, so they're getting money from that. Please approve the transaction, my friend. Approved. Oh, here are some other projects that might interest you because you funded this project. Would you like to continue? <laughs> 40. <laughs> that was great. That was great. Okay. Does anyone else want to share before we move on to the next section? Cool. Um, so the next step is, um, now that you have your script in front of you, um, is to start like annotating and start thinking about um, where some of this um, where some of this script might translate potentially into UI later on. But also to sort of start thinking about, or start noting down maybe where you've used language to help explain certain terms. Like that, uh, in your example, you had that sort of question to the user, user posed to really start thinking about, okay, where would be a sensible place for that to come in the, in the journey or it, as we start to think about it more in terms of a, a product rather than a conversation. So like, um, like a little laugh. Yeah, uh, note down any like where, where you can like explain maybe any, any jargon, so around the whole um, onboarding or connecting a wallet, for example, um, and start, you know, Thinking about okay, we've asked the questions in this order, and this is how it's, it's just going to translate into the interface later on. So an example might be like it, in the example again before, it's like okay, this is going to work well. Um, it could be like a, a drop-down research, but actually maybe we should pre-select um, the token if the user only has one in the wallet, for example. Does that make sense? We'll take like five minutes to just start. start doing that.
happens so um, well how do you arrive at the project but then also what you want to know like why should you give money to this weird name project instead of the real Kickstarter so uh, one of the community points you have um, yeah so uh, basically like I think the main kind of like value proposition for this could be that um, since Kickstarter as a company doesn't need to like profit from this so you're like more of your contribution can go towards funding the project directly rather than like you know Kickstarter making a profit off of you know platform fees or whatever um, and then just like the transparency and accountability and also the you know being able to support a project even if it doesn't get fully funded so communicating that upfront to the user um, before they even get to the point of wanting a fund, wanting to fund a project um, and then uh, basically, after that point, you would basically the user would want to know, okay, I like the value proposition of this platform. What can I do to like find a project that I'm interested in? And um, how they arrive on a project could be, you know, how the project's external marketing or you know the existing ways for you know like on Pinterest, you select which things you're interested in and shows you. So that's kind mm -hmm. of like already solved. But yeah, and then yeah. Um, so then the rest of the flow is. Um, Fairly standard, but I think the right assumption would be to not assume that user, again, knows much about crypto. Like, if they come just to a weirdly named Kickstarter, it doesn't mean that they uh, have knowledge of gas. So, first question in the user mind is like, well, I guess, just press the big bright button, but then next follow-up question from the system would be, do you own crypto? Like, any at all? Ethereum, do you know that? And uh, if not, we probably we need to provide a crypto, like credit card integration or whatever. Um, then the next kind of, do you know, wallets. And uh, we're a lucky if user do, and we can probably check for that. Mm -hmm. um, but if not, then comes the next kind of education moment of like, here's how you install MetaMask, or yeah. most likely. Um, mm -hmm. And then things get a bit easier. 
So then we can suggest uh, amounts and uh, the, uh, the rewards you get, and you can just choose from a list. Um, and then you have this recap. Um, yeah, so after kind of the user gets to that point of uh, seeing how much they can contribute in the different like levels and rewards of contribution, uh, we, I think it would be a good, at that point it would be a good point to kind of recap the whole process and like, you know, reiterate that, you know, if the funding fails, these funds will be returned back to you, um, that this is the amount you're pledging for X amount of days or however long the project is being funded, and uh, during this period, um, if the project doesn't get funded, your amount of contribution will uh, uh, just like you know accrue the interest that they could. Uh, the project will still earn this much, you know, in uh, just interest. So um, uh, at that point, then mm -hmm. uh, point. yeah. So the in terms of like gas. So instead of like saying, let's say the user wants to pledge two hundred dollars or two hundred die. And then instead of saying, okay, here's 200 die, and then you need to pay like this much extra in gas, we just subtract the amount they, this subtract the gas cost from the amount they give, and then so just the project receives less. Um, and then there's other even ways to do it. We were thinking of like prepaying for gas when people when the actual project gets posted. There's a fee there to post a project, which could prepay for gas in a way um, for users to minimize the surprise for again people who don't know like because if you the uh, the experience we want to compare with and not be any worse is kickstarter and if kickstarter you're never surprised like you say you want to pay 50 and you pay 50 you're never like oh there's a surprise fee which is variable <laughs> on time of the day yeah, yeah. Um, that's and that kind of, you know, just reiterate all these kind of things that are happening and then just the confirm pledge button which would then pop up the MetaMask or what, whatever wallet connect yeah. or whatever they, whatever way the user is interacting with the wallet. Yeah. That's, really That's awesome, point. thank you. Yeah. I, I wanted to add, that I, I think that the, the challenge that we've had is we're butting up against what, for example, I know the psychology of sharing information with an interface. Mm -hmm. So for example, linking a wallet, asking someone to link their wallet from the beginning is a really big step psychologically. Yep. It's much easier to say, how much do you want to donate? And when they fit, instead of having a pull down menu, you actually physically type a number. Now you've committed. There's a whole literature on like the psychology of sunk cost. The fact that you physically typed 10 means you're committed to doing so. So when you get the prompt, link your wallet, the inhibition has gone down. Right? And, and so the challenge that we've had in working with this is that there's already stuff we know about how people commit to actually following through on things, mm -hmm. given that we know that every company out there is collecting every piece of data on everything that we're doing at all times, and we everyone's becoming aware of that and don't want to share as much. So how do you break down inhibitions while embracing their willingness to want to donate, et cetera? So like, we already presume that they, they were crypto holders, the mere fact that they're on the site. We never determined that we were going to, you know, try to be an exact replica of Kickstarter. It's just Kickstarter for people who own crypto. We don't need to educate them on it. It's just like, what do you got? What do you want to support? And we're going to help you through that process, right? But that's a, that's a strategic decision that our group would would basically be based on, rather than trying to appeal to everyone and say, yeah, here we're going to help you to learn all this new stuff. That's not the role or the strategy of our organization. No, that makes sense. And I think the, the way this workshop has, has gone, you know, we, we didn't have that sort of that first step, the research, which is why it's so important, right? It's, that's why we have these like different experiences because you're designing for one type of user, you're designing for another. But that's that's all great. Um, we need to move really quickly on to the third part of the exercise because I'd be really bad at timekeeping. Um, so the next uh, the next activity um, is just to now sketch that out, so sort of start drawing it as as a product, as an interface. Um, and using that dialogue that you've done, using the annotations to really inform and think about um, yeah, how it should look when you start to, to sketch it out. So there's an, an example um, that I just wanted to show so that people could um, have a sense. Um, yeah, I think, again, I have to do this in like five, six minutes, so apologies. Um, but yeah, makes sense? Yeah. Just Remember? Thank <laughs> you.
so many steps, but if we can't, we have to educate. Um, recap and confirm transactions, so that's like third screen. And the fourth screen is a transaction state help. Transaction state help. 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 Hell. Oh, help. Yeah. Help. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. Um, cool. Great. Um, uh, so yeah, just to, just to close the session, I think, um, your script can basically act now as like a a design artifact that maybe you have um, you know, on the wall while you're working or in a shared file in the team. This is something that you can always like, refer back to, to like, um, as you sort of iterate on the design, as you um, uh, to remind yourself of like, what the user's thinking and feeling throughout, throughout the process. Um, and yeah, the script itself is iterative. Like you said that you changed your design based on something these guys had said. So this is something that you, know, you can come back to and if something new, uh, you know, uh, if something new comes to light, you find you do more research, um, or you need to build like a new feature, script out that, you know, uh, scope, scope the script to that, um, and then see where it fits. If it fits into the original script, um, uh, you can try and figure out like, is this a natural fit? Should we even be building this? Does this make sense within the context of what we already had? Because like, if it's not going to work in, in a script, it probably won't work in an interface either. Um, and that's it. Um, yeah, sorry, I didn't keep time very well, but um, I hope you got a flavour for what conversational design is, and I hope you guys, yeah, maybe get to try it with, with your teams, and there's my Twitter if you want to ask me questions or come chat with me. Great, thank you. Thank you.